Hey everybody, Chris Pies here for another classroom with PCA Sim Racing. Uh, this week's classroom is going to cover Zanvort, uh, specifically updated Zanvort. Uh, up until recently, iRacing was running the old Zanvort, uh, which was before Formula One came back to it. Um, but now we have brand new Zanvort with all of the fun uh, Formula One toys and modifications to the track uh, to make it, you know, uh, I guess good enough for the comment or for the new formula one cars um part of that includes a really high ranking final corner uh before if you ran the old zanvort you'll remember it was a very flat um kind of high uh high, high speed sweeper uh and depending on the car you had to kind of tiptoe your way through there um but now we have a really um we have a really banked corner, almost uh, NASCAR-like, just going right instead of left. So um, a lot of changes here. We'll try to get through it. Um, the theme of the day for Zanvort is patience, I think. Um, a lot of these corners require a lot of patience. Um, it's very, very easy to get on throttle too soon uh, and just have the front end wash out through understeer, and then you have to come out of the throttle to make the corner. Uh, and then the second theme is uh, chicanes. <laughs> uh, or not chicanes, sorry, carousels. Um, a lot of corners around here seem to just last forever. Uh, they're like over 180 degrees, or nearabouts makes no difference, 180 degrees, and they can be classified some as sweepers, but a lot of them as what I would call carousels, meaning you get down to the tightest point of the corner and you just kind of follow the curving around and we'll go over it as such. Um, there's also a lot of places on this track that uh, require a lot of impro improvisation. Um, you can have an idea of how you want to go through it, um, but I find myself, especially in turn eight, turn nine, turn 10 area, where I don't always have the same line depending on the grip in the car, the track conditions, if I'm racing people, um, it seems like there's a lot of different lines to divide the track up. So improvisation in the sense of don't feel like if you get, you're not on your perfect line, uh, that it's the end of the world. Um, learn what you got to get out of your car in order to still make the turn. If you take it a little shallower than you normally would, or a little wider than you normally would. So practice different lines. The track is, feels like a mile wide, uh, and, and, it allows for some good door-to-door -door racing, but it can also, you can get a little bit lost in there in terms of the line you want to take. So let's go ahead and load up the replay and we can start talking about Zandvoort. Does anybody have any questions while we loading up this replay? No? Okay, cool. Um, it looks like we've got some good races going on uh, across all of the... Uh, the classes uh we're noticing a, a couple of uh, folks that are starting to rise to the top in like the the sport and challenge races um but you know it is a long season it's seven races uh just because uh, you may have had one or two bad races does not mean that um you're out of the championship by any means because the leaders could also have one or two bad races and come back to you so you always fight out the season is multiple races long it's not just one race it's definitely not one corner uh, and you have to treat it as such. My nice long marathon. Um, nothing is a sprint in these these series races for the championships. That is really loud, so I'm going to turn that down. Okay. So, like I said, wonderful Zandvoort. Uh, I'm going to get the camera going properly. And we'll just crack right into it and start the track walk. So I'm going to pick my fast lap to make me look good, I guess. And... Um, it looks like in terms of track conditions, um, I plugged in the track conditions from the website. Um, so I think it's August 25th in the morning. Came out to 64 degrees Fahrenheit. So it is a super cold track, which means lots of grip out there. Um, so if the track is warmer, um, lap times are going to balloon. There's also a good chance, sorry. There's a good chance for the, um, the track to be, um, uh, warmer or hotter and if that's the case the the your track your your lap times are going to be higher as well um, but for those keeping score at home um, I did a 133.7 um, after kind of getting a feel for this particular setup and track state uh, we are for the challenge and sport races it's a fixed setup race so it is high downforce so make sure you're using high downforce to uh, to run this and not um, medium downforce all right so let's get 
get going coming down the front straight at Zandvoort um, we get a good opportunity to do uh, get a good run coming out of the final corner this straightaway begins a corner early um, and we have to remember that um, so we got to get a good drive out of the corner that we are accelerating out of the final corner which I believe is turn 14 uh, is, a, is part of the straightaway it's flat um, so the straightaway actually ends on the entry f or starts at the end uh, the entry of 13 and goes all the way around all the way into turn one and you're pretty much reaching terminal velocity of the car by the time you hit the uh, brake zone for turn one turn one down here uh we have some nice boards over here on the left uh that are a in good indicator of where you want to break i was using the 100 board um if the track is really hot and you're struggling getting the car slowed down at 100 just back it up and break a little bit softer you could use this telephone pole here as another uh, really good brake marker as you come up to it. Uh, so pick out something that is consistent and that you can use. But I was finding yeah. braking just before the 100 board was working out pretty nicely with these track conditions. Braking, it's a threshold braking scenario. Um, and you're going to want to get this car slowed up and, and basically full, full on emergency stop. You'll probably be an ABS. That's fine. Um, and then what we're going to do, if you notice, we have a ton of camber into turn one and this starts the trend of these little carousels throughout this entire track um the turn one just seems to last forever um it's basically 180 degrees it's a big hairpin in the sense that it is 180 degrees and we will be going the opposite way that we started um but there is a bit of a, a turn in it it's not a, a really tight hairpin so we do need to get the car down to the tightest point on the on the on the turn down by the curbing and ride that curbing around a little bit in order to get a good run out the shortest distance for this for this corner is the inside of the corner um however you can diamond it a little bit take a nice wide entry in carry the speed bring the car's nose in to kind of tuck in and kind of do a, a single late apex to try to get a good run coming out of it um your mileage may vary in terms of what's more comfortable I was experimenting with both, but I was finding that maybe the little um, a, a late diamond tends to work pretty well. So as you can see here, coming in, I'm, I'm trail breaking down into the corner, going all the way down to second gear. And then I'm basically starting my carousel run when the curbing kind of starts. I'm bringing it in a little tighter, a little tighter, a little tighter, but I'm getting down to the curbing pretty darn quickly and staying with the curbing. It's not my um, apex is not a individual point it's more of a zone. And so the zone for my apex is pretty much starting about mid uh, curbing and then riding it around until I yeah. see a good exit. What'd you say? No, what'd you uh, say? Somebody's got a hot mic. So if you wouldn't mind, make sure you're muted. Uh, I appreciate it. Yep. Uh, so as you come around here, you'll notice that if I back it up on the entry again, really firm break, trail break in. And the goal is to try to get down to the curbing pretty quickly and then ride that curbing around. And then we're just kind of maintenance throttling about mid corner. So around the midpoint of the corner, we're just keeping a good maintenance throttle to keep the car ex at a consistent speed because we have a lot of steering angle in the car. If we don't add maintenance throttle with that steering angle, the car will slow down and we'll actually start tucking in even more. We wanna maintain that momentum through the corner. So we start adding that maintenance throttle. And that's where you see right here in my telemetry, about half throttle when I'm down here at the curbing just for a little bit and I'm modulating it to make sure the front of the car stays nice and tidy. Once you go to full throttle, the front end of the car is really going to open up uh, and it's going to start to understeer out. And we want to make sure that we use that to our advantage for when we go to full throttle, we want that understeer to occur because we want the car to track out all the way to track out on the left side over the curbing. Um, being patient yields rewards here. As we come out to track out, the track goes from a high camber state to a tabletop. So we're going to start losing that lateral grip that we had. And sometimes if you come out too, too hard or too quickly and you have too much steering angle, um, once you get on that tabletop, you can get a little bit of oversteer um, as, as everything kind of flattens out. So just be ready for it. You should be, as, the, as you, the car starts tracking out, you should be opening your hands. You should not keep tight hands all the way up to the top of the hill. Um, so open your hands as you're accelerating out. So let me back it up and show it without me starting and stopping. Coming in, breaking at the 100 board, firm break, threshold breaking, start trail breaking all the way down to the curbing, basically through here. Maintenance throttle, mid corner, 
and then start feeding on the throttle coming out, letting the car understeer, opening our hands, using all of the curb on the way out of the track out. I'm in second gear through there. All right, coming up to turn two. So this little left-hander is not a turn. So the turn two is this one at the top of the hill. hill. Um, this is a tricky one. Uh, it's kind of blind in the sense that we can't see around the Armco. Um, the, the entire corner we can see the curbing which is where our apex point is is basically right side tires on the curb but and we have a lot of camber as we can see a lot of the track but outside of that we can't see the track out point and it can it can lead to some interesting situations because if we can't see where we want to go it's hard for us to drive there um, so we have to have a vision of what this what the sight picture looks like on the back side of this this corner and we need to understand that we need to try to keep this car a little bit tight for setting up for turn um for turn three around the tight hairpin to the left so what i mean by that is we're going to get the car all the way over to track left we're going to dab a brakes downshift down to third gear through here hit the apex right here mid mid um curbing right up on the grass we can use all of this curbing but instead of popping back on the throttle and accelerating out of this corner, we kind of just need a maintenance throttle through it. And the reason is, is we don't want to track out more than halfway on the exit here. So as you can see here with my throttle trace, I'm not, normally I would be full throttle and tracking out all the way to track out left. But because we're about to go in this really tight left-hander and I don't want to take it from the left side of the track, I am just maintenance throttling it to keep the car where I want it, which is mid-track or even right of mid-track. If we go too hard and we end up hitting this, the tendency that happens is we come into here without either full throttle, which can really lead to an oversteer situation on the way out of this corner, or not enough throttle, which takes the weight off the rear of the car and makes it really squirrely on the way out. If you look at the, the track and what we can see, you can see a lot of camber here at the corner point. But as we come out of the corner, the track disappears, which means our camber completely goes away. We come up over a ridge, and then as we crest that ridge, our grip is just gone. So we want to get this corner kind of finished while we have camber. And we don't want to be turning still as we go over this tabletop and all over the other side, this waterfall over the other side. We enter into turn four from about mid-track, and if you've seen the Formula One come through here um, the past couple of years, you'll notice that nobody goes down to the curbing on the left. And the reason is, is there's no camber down there. Yeah, it's the shortest distance, but you can't carry any speed because there's no camber helping you out. All the camber is up here high, and you can actually see the dark part of the track. So the fastest way around here is actually up here on the top end of the bowl where you're using the camber to catch you and slingshot you around the corner. If you're taking this corner down here at the apex, down here um, at the curbing, you're gonna be slow. You may be fast on the way in to get to this point, but you're gonna have to go a lot slower at the apex than somebody that is using the camber to help them slingshot around the corner. And the result is, is we're coming onto a, a, one of the longer straightaways on the track and we want to carry our momentum through this corner, the slow corner that leads onto the straightaway. And if we can carry five, six miles an hour more than somebody that's on that inside, we will carry that advantage all the way down the straightaway. So we want to take this corner, second gear, up on the banking to maximize our speed through here. We have to be patient through here. You can see I'm already over halfway through the corner and I'm just now starting to add throttle. And then I don't get on the full throttle until my vision, I start to kind of see the track start to open. My vision is going to be up here, up, up, um, down the track. I'm not looking right in front of me because that doesn't tell me anything. So I'm looking way into the distance as far as I possibly can see to try to pick out the point where I want the car to go. And that's a common, th well, that's something you should be doing on any track, but especially Zandvoort. Um, with some of these crazy elevation changes and curves, um, you have to be looking out as far as you can to see where the track is going to go, anticipate where the track's going to go, so you drive to that point. Back on full throttle, coming out in second gear, opening our hands as we come out. We'll use all of the, all of the, uh, the rumble on the way out, on the track out point, and carry the speed second, third, fourth, all the way down the straightaway. 
if you find yourself running out of track on the exit, it's because you're getting on throttle too soon. So if you're in this point and you get to throttle, let's say you're about halfway through the corner and the car starts to take a tuck in because it wants to, it, the front end really wants to tuck in and you get on, you pin the throttle too soon, what's gonna happen is you'll lift all the weight off that front of that car. The camber will help you a little bit, but the front end is gonna wash out, you're gonna understeer and you're gonna run out of track on the exit. That tends to also happen if you're not looking down the track because you don't know where your track out point is. So be looking as far as possible. So if I go into cockpit view, you can see what I mean. It's hard to see down the track. We're waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting. I'm starting to pick up the throttle as I start to see this little orange um, part of the barrier. And then I know if I get to that orange part of the barrier and my nose is still tucking in, I can be on full throttle and I'll make it on the on the exit. So that's kind of my little cheat for knowing when to get on throttle through here. So if I back it up, and I'm gonna take it full speed because it's so tricky. Looking for it, looking for it. There it is, boom, full throttle on the way through. And it puts me in a good spot coming up. All right, any questions between Ooh. turn one through four? Turn one through four. Good, great, we've already covered so much. <laughs> this will all be, this is all going to be recorded as well, so I'll post the recording um, if we get to that. Or if you need to review this, we can always go back. Okay, so coming through this straightaway, you're going to have 5, 6, and 7, which are all... Or 5 and 6 are part of this straightaway. Um, so they're not really much to talk about other than it's a straightaway that's not straight, but it is flat, so it's considered straight. Um, if you get a good run coming out of turn 4 you can really get a good run on other drivers. But be careful because we are using all of the track through here. Um, the tendency or the high, the risky part of this portion of the track is there is a tendency for cars to get alongside each other through here because it is a straightaway. And if everybody's using the entire track and you're too wide, you can start banging doors and you can start running out of track and putting somebody in the grass. So on your own, it's and it's a nothing burger you're not even thinking about this portion of the track um if you're too wide okay yeah now you really just got to start paying attention so try different lines try to pretend when you're doing practice that you've got a car on your inside how much room do you need to leave them what does it feel like pretend you're being pinched by somebody else what does that feel like um so you're not surprised by it by the first time you see it is in a race condition um, the only thing I'll say is coming up on the right side leading up to turn seven. I think it's turn seven. I'm going to check my cheat sheet again. Um, yeah, coming up to turn seven. So this is turn six is we have this access road right here on the right. Um, you can use it. This is part of the track. Um, so don't feel like you have to keep your car left of this white line. Um, I try to apex it like this is part of the track. So you can see my car actually leaving uh, right side tires into here. This is not a one X. So don't, you know, there's no need to take your car completely over this point um but you can definitely go and create a straight line between those two points we come up to turn seven uh which is tricky uh probably one of the more tricky corners to it's not tricky in the sense that it's not it's not a difficult corner to stay on the track it's tricky to maintain your speed going through it um the tendency is to over slow through this corner and and, and myself included so we're cresting a hill we can't see where the track is going um, but we have a brake marker here. We've got a little uh, MyLapse uh, uh, digital flag marker here. Um, but as we crest the top of this hill, this track just completely falls away, and it's this big, long right-hand sweeper. Um, this is a bit of a, like a, a preview of what we're going to experience in the next race in Mugello, which has a lot of these types of corners. Um, but the key here is to get the car in a condition that allows you to have maximum lateral grip so you can carry as much speed through this corner as possible. How do we do that? Well, we need to get our brake in. We do need to slow this car down, so we will need a brake at some point, but we wanna get it done early so when we get off of the brakes and we start transitioning to throttle, we have a stable platform for this fast right-hander. If we wait too long and we're going downhill when we get on the brakes, all of a sudden the car is all out of sorts, it's unbalanced, and now you're trying to also tell it to take, I want a ton of lateral grip in addition to braking, and the possibility of a spin becomes very, very real at that point. So 
brake early, brake nice and light, keep maintain the, the balance of the platform um, under the deceleration part of this the, leading up to the corner, and then tra transition nice and smooth off the brake back to a smooth throttle so you can get a good stable platform through here. So my brake point is pretty much at the top of the hill. You can see here I've started adding my brake. It's not a firm brake by any means. I am not giving it an eight pedal. In fact, I'm probably barely giving it a three pedal, but it's enough to slow the car down a little bit, set the nose for a good turn in so I can transition to accelerator. So, so there you go. There's my, my maximum amount of brake is right here, pretty much right as I crest this hill, less than 50%. So about 40%. And then as I brake and I come down, I start coming off of the brake as the car starts to tuck in for this sweeper. So I'm pretty much off the brake here. I'm coasting. As I coast, the car is gonna start coming in narrower and narrower than the corner actually is. My eyes are up the track. I am looking for the rumble strips that are just now starting to come into view over here around the arm cone. And then as I see those rumble strips and as the car is tucking in like a carousel, I start picking up throttle through here in fourth gear. We want to try to get down to the rumble strips. I missed them a little bit, but that's okay. I still had plenty of room on the exit and get a good run coming through the corner. The tendency on your way down the hill is to think, oh no, I'm going to run out of track or the car is going to understeer into oblivion. In reality though, yes, we're going downhill, but look at all the camber we've got. We can see so much of the track and then at the pretty much at the apex point of turn seven, all of a sudden it, it compresses and we get a ton of grip down there. So we're gonna get this feeling of understeer, 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 and then right here, right when we pick up the throttle, right in the compression point, boom, the car just grips up and gives you more grip, even though you've, you've gone to full throttle at that point. We're opening our hands, keeping our vision up. We're gonna use all of this curving on the left and basically keeping as quiet a platform as possible. What I mean by quiet platform means I'm not sawing at the wheel, I'm not adding a lot of steering angle and then opening my hands really fast. Everything is slow and deliberate because I'm trying to maintain the integrity of the, of the balance of the car uh, to keep it nice and quiet. After we get a good run through turn seven, we're gonna come up to turn eight and this starts the kind of craziness that is Zandvoort in my opinion. This is. This is, this is a hard part on any racetrack. This is just a difficult part in racing. Um, it's very similar in some ways to Coda, the stadium section at Coda. Lots of lines through here. The fast line isn't necessarily the same thing all the time. It depends on track temp, it depends on the car, it depends on your tire wear, it depends on your fuel load. There's a lot of variables in here. Um, and so I'm gonna show you one line that I like through here but this is where the improvisation comes in. Depending on where your car ends up, that's where you're gonna be taking the corner from. You have an idea of how you wanna get through this section of the track, but it's just an idea. It's not something set in stone. And if you're not on that line, don't freak out and say, oh no, I don't know what to do. Plan for it and adapt to whatever you end up, wherever you end up through this next section of corners. So as we come down this hill, we're keeping our eyes right here at the apex point for this turn. I'm going to downshift into fourth gear if I haven't, if I'm not already in fourth gear. Or actually, I'm going to downshift to third gear. My apologies. So I'm going from fourth down to third. If you got a really good run, you could even have gri grabbed fifth, but it's not for very long. You're going to go down to third gear through here. You're going to turn in and it's just a, this is a traditional kind of kink slash single point apex. Um, we're trying to apex right at the sausage. We don't want to touch the sausage, but we want to get our right side tires as close as possible. Third gear, I'm leaving a little bit of room because I do not want to hit this this um, this curbing here because that will upset the car or damage it. So nice fast sweeper coming through here. Everything about the corner grips up right at apex. So you can see we're going downhill and then boom, compression right there. You can actually see sparks on the left side from where the body works actually hitting the tarmac. So lots of compression right there at apex, which is going to give us a nice little bit of grip. Um, right when we want it. And then as soon as we go through there, we're gonna be back on throttle pretty heavily and pretty quickly opening our hands. So the radius of this corner is increasing after apex. So that means we need to be increasing our hands as well. So opening our hands, allowing us to allow the grip of the car to accept that full throttle that we have in the car. And then we are going to break 
in my where I see the break, I'm looking down here. I'm looking for when I can see the curbing, and that's my indicator when to break. You have a break marker way out here. In fact, I didn't even know this existed until just now. This 50 board, but it is so far off to the left that you should not be looking out here. You should be looking over to the right side. So this is all but worthless in my opinion. You need to be looking where you want the car to go, which is over on the right. Um, and you need a you need what's called a sight picture. You need to see what the track looks like and that's where I break, not a single point that you're waiting to cross. Um, it's a very difficult place to get your braking right because of that. And we're braking while turning, um, which the car cars don't like in general. Cars like when they, you know, you give them their braking in, in a single line, in a straight line. They don't really like to brake and turn at the, at the same time. So it's kind of a just a an awkward turn um, to get down to the apex. So we're going to have to start braking while turning, which is what I'm doing here. I'm trying to keep the car as straight as possible to get the most efficiency out of my brakes. But the reality is I still have to turn the car. So I'm starting to turn. I can't brake really more than 30, 40% because of the amount of steering angle I've got in the car. So it's an early brake pedal. It's a light brake pedal while tra trailing down to the curbing. Much like the theme from Zandvoort from earlier, you can see a lot of the track going into this corner, which means we have camber helping us, but not as much as previous corners. So a lot of the previous corners have a lot of camber, which helps us turn. When we get to a corner like this that doesn't have as much camber, it doesn't feel like it has camber. It feels like there's no grip. Reality is there is some camber. You can still see the track, but it feels like it's a flat corner and, and you have to treat it as such. So nice, smooth hands. You'll get a little bit of oversteer coming through here uh, if you're not careful, but you can use it to turn the car. It grips up right at apex because that's where the most camber is. And then as we accelerate out, the track goes from camber to flat again. Notice the theme here at Zandvoort. So we're flattened out, we're accelerating, and the rear of the car is going to want to get really squirrely on us. So it's actually going to want to oversteer coming through here. So we need to be opening our hands, be ready for that oversteer, countersteer if necessary. But the nice thing is, is we have a ton of track on the exit that we can open our hands and allow the car to take that, um, use that grip for accelerating and not cornering. As, you, as I said before, look how wide this, this track is. There's a ton of lines through here. Um, this line in particular is just trying to get a good accelerator coming out. Um, but as you come out, just understand that you're going to have to go to the left at some point. So we need to get into a, the car into a good spot. We're, we're letting the car track out to the left so we can maximize our speed to the previous corner. But we will need to get the car over to the right or at least somewhere over in the, in the vicinity of the right to take the even more important left hander coming up. As we come through here, the tendency, one of the things that and it was, it was, I was doing this a lot on Zandvoort previously was, okay, I'm going to go left. It's a really awkward decreasing radius corner. I want to be on the right side so I can open the corner as much as possible. And I would drive the car all the way out here to this access road or basically this grass. I don't think that's necessary um, because you're moving the car and you're driving the car further away from where you want to go. Right? You're actually increasing the distance that you're going to travel by 50, 100 feet if you move the car all the way over to the right to go left. I actually kind of prefer taking it from about mid-track here. You're going to have to slow down anyway. It's a very long corner. It's like a carousel. It's a decreasing radius, which means you're going to be constantly decelerating all the way down to the apex, which is very late around this corner. Why would I want to go out another 50 feet if I can avoid it? It's just going to it's just going to take more time. Not to mention if I'm in a race scenario, I am opening myself up to all sorts of dive bombs on the inside if I go all the way to the right. So I prefer taking the, this next corner from a mid track um, and not all the way from the right. I'm going to break well before the access road. If you're waiting to the access road, you're going to run out of room. Um, this is another one. It's a sight picture thing. There's no brake markers. Other than you have the access road in front of you, but it's a nebulous... 50 feet, 20 feet, 30 feet, I don't know, at the break point, you're going to be turning the car as well as braking. So you can't do a threshold brake and slow the car all at once. Um, so it's much like the previous corner, just going the other direction. You also don't have a lot of camber. So the, 
the track is going to feel greasy and slippery and the car is going to be wanting to oversteer and then as you get on throttle it's going to be wanting to over or it's going to be wanting to understeer and then as you get on throttle it's going to be wanting to oversteer it's going to be a mess so this is just basically balancing this car trying to get to the corner with as high min speed as possible and to a point where you can get on the throttle early to accelerate out of the corner so again starting my braking trail braking trail braking down you'll notice that as i'm trail braking down the car is starting to rotate i am now off all pedals so i've done my trail braking braking i've already rotated the car in a nice situation at this point and i'm actually starting to add throttle really early like at the beginning of this curbing because i've got the car on a really good trajectory it's pointed well it, it, it's over rotated um for the corner so it's pointing and i'm going i'm decreasing my radius relative to the corner and then I can start accelerating as I come through this corner. So my trajectory is much tighter. So I add throttle, which will increase my trajectory or increase my radius coming out and accelerate with a late apex, probably about two thirds of the way around the corner to get a good run coming out at the track out point. And I'm in second gear coming through here. My vision, what I'm looking for throughout this entire track, or through, throughout this entire corner is, let me go to the cockpit. I'm looking for the DRS sign. So I'm waiting, I'm waiting. My eyes are over here, over here, over here. And DRS, boom, full throttle, track out. That's my track out point is that DRS sign. Eyes up, eyes up, eyes up. So I'm gonna back it up and show what this entire section looks like because it is not easy. So we're coming back down, coming out of turn seven, got some good speed. We're going to brake, downshift to third, off the brake, and then hit the compression, back on full throttle, opening our hands so the, the car will accept the full throttle. Then we're gonna brake while turning based on the, uh, the vision that we see. Apex at a late, super late apex point on there, opening our hands, second gear, accelerating out, grab third, and then go to about mid-track, brake again, while turning, get the rotation early, get off the brakes, start feeding on throttle as the radius is decreasing, looking for the DRS sign to accelerate out and let the car run out as soon as we can. Any question for that complex there? Like I said, one of the more difficult complexes in racing. Do you find that section to be like the number one a area to try to pass someone but also where to look out because somebody's gonna there's so many different lines somebody's always trying something there yes for sure um and that's why it's very similar to coda's stadium section it's the exact same kind of concept through here except the turns just aren't quite as tight um so yeah if you're in a fight and that's why I said this is so you have to be adaptable and you have to improvise through here. If you've got cars all around here, you may not want to take this corner all the way from the left side because you're inviting somebody to send it down the inside and park it and pass you. So you may actually take this left hander on your way through this corner. You may pinch it off a little bit and take it more on the central axis here to take a little bit of a shallower line to protect from another car attacking you. But if you do that, you're going to be slower coming out of this corner, which means that if the attacking car is smart, they will wait, take the traditional line, and carry more speed coming through there. So they are carrying more speed relative to you. But if they do it, if you do it that way and they're carrying more speed than you, we're, and you end up over here, where can they go? They are going to have to go out here on the right side. And if they're going out here on the right side, you're in position to protect for the left on the inside here. The only way they're going to be able to pass is to go around the outside here, which is basically impossible. Um, so they're going to, you're basically in the proper position to get a good, to, to protect yourself from being attacked here. So it's one of those complexes where a pass will start, depending on what the car behind you is doing, it can dictate how you start to drive the, the, the track. Um, so that's why I suggest when you're practicing, don't just practice what you would think is an ideal line over and over. Try different lines, try different scenarios. If you have a friend or you, you get one of the, um, one of the uh, instructors here uh, on the Discord on PCA to come run some laps with you and try attacking you through there. Um, so you can see kind of what the tendency of other cars would be. Um, and just practice different lines. Get more comfortable with it. Get comfortable with what it's like to have a car on your outside here and you can't track out. 
get comfortable with going all the way out to the right side and pretending there's a car on the inside and you're going to over under them. Different things like that, different scenarios. But yeah, this is a really interesting area and really interesting section of track that invites all sorts of shenanigans for wheel to wheel racing. And that's why it's so wide. That's why it's the size of a of a of a, of a landing strip is because it invites that door to door type of racing here. Any other questions uh, or comments through here? Yeah, are you coming out of that turn in second gear? Yes, coming out in second gear. Thank you. I believe. Let me just make sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm in second gear. Okay, so we've made it through the difficult part of the track, um, and now we're running to the the last third of the track. Uh, we have a interesting little chicane here that is. It's a chicane, but it's there's nothing quite like it. Um, so brake marker will be just after the 100 board. I use the rumble strip, though, as my brake marker. I brake just before the rumble strip in a straight line. So boom, braking relatively hard coming through here because I need to slow the car down. And then this right-hander reminds me of uh, the turn eight right-hander, that kink that we were talking about. It's just a little bit slower. So we're going to use a little bit of trail brake on the way in and then we're going to get off the throttle and carry our speed through here so i'm trail braking all the way down and then off the throttle and then as i crest over that i'm going to be back on throttle if we do it right we'll end up tracking out right to the curbing at the bottom of this carousel um, for the second part of the chicane there's tons of grip down here that's where all the camber is this is the the inverse of the carousel from earlier in the track where there's no camber on the apex, but lots of camber up top. This is the inverse. There's lots of camber down below, but there's nothing out here. There's no point in opening yourself up for this left-hander, pinching this right-hander off. You want to track out and drive it and attack all the way down to this apex point. So I've entered this carousel super aggressively. I'm starting right off on the left side of the track, and I am just going to follow it around. Da -da 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 -da. It's what it feels like. It feels like the car is just like compressing in if you drive the nurburgring at all it's very similar to the feeling of the carousels on the nurburgring just all the way down there um, because that's where all the grip is so we'll ride it all the way around keep it nice and tidy and we're looking with our vision to where we can kind of see the curbing on the outside because as we accelerate out we're going to be opening our hands to get a good run on the way out you'll notice much like the it's almost exactly like the nurburgring in the sense that as you come out of the corner, look at it, it just goes from super lots of camber to flat. And as you come out of the bowl, you're going to get oversteer. As you can see, my car is kind of pitching and diving. So if I don't stop it, watch. So I've got a lot of lateral grip and I come out of the bowl and the car is really starting to dance on me. So you just have to be ready for a little bit of oversteer as you're on your way out the bowl. Coming up to the penultimate corner, and probably this is the most important corner on the track, frankly, because it. Wait, gear for that corner? That's second gear through there. Everything's second gear on the slow stuff. I don't go into first gear anywhere here. Um, so the penultimate corner. This is the most important corner, in my opinion, and it's just a very fast sweeper. Um, we're going to try to get down to the curbing relatively quickly in third gear. So I'm going to break at the fifty board here. So break at the 50 board, not a heavy break, maybe a six pedal, and then immediately start trailing off. Look at the camber that we've got. Notice the trend here at Zanvoort, lots of camber all over the place. Lots of camber that's gonna catch the car on the way in. I'm off the break because now the camber is starting and it's gonna, it's basically gonna compress into the, uh, into the tarmac and we're gonna get a good run. So I start picking up throttle and I'm full throttle just before the apex, right side tires on the curbing, clipping the grass as close as I can to get a really good and open extend in this radius of this corner to get a run coming out of it using all the curbing on the left and staying flat all the way through the final corner which is new and like looks like a nascar oval um and the car has no problem going through their full flat out um one of the things i did notice too in terms of if you're on a qualifying lap versus racing uh, the tendency is to want to try to track out all the way up here because that's kind of what we're just programmed to do, right? Just know that if you do track out, you're going uphill on your way out. So you're actually fighting gravity 
so you're not accelerating as fast as you can. If you keep it tight, which the car doesn't mind because there's so much grip here, um, and just go about mid-track, you're not going uphill, you're keeping it flat. And then once you get past the the banking and it flattens out, then you can, there's plenty of time to move over uh, for your entry into turn one. So I wait here and then keep it nice and straight all the way down to turn one. All right, any questions through those last few corners? Starting at the chicane. Um, what is it? Turn thirteen. Uh, do you ever try to get into it into low fourth instead of high third? Because I've been playing with it. Low fourth seems to not give you any squirreliness, but I don't know that it's faster. Normally, I'm all for that. Um, except I'm getting a. Let's. You can actually hear this as I come through. Look how much squirt I get in third. I am getting like three seconds of third gear, of good third gear acceleration. So starting right here, I'm on full throttle. And I go full throttle all the way to the entrance of the last corner. That's a long time to be in third gear to get the advantage of it. If I'm in fourth gear, you may be bogging down a little bit and it may, you may be out of the power band. Um, but try both. I mean, if you're getting squirrely, and fourth gear is working for you and you're faster that way, then take fourth gear. Take what's most comfortable for you and how you drive in the car. Um, if you try to take third gear through there and you're losing time, then yeah, take, take whatever's fastest for you. Um, so keep your relative up so you can see if you're gaining or losing time through there for sure. I'm normally an advocate for take the highest gear you possibly can without losing time. So, um, I might. I, I just wonder I just if I'm breaking too time. late there. I think I may be breaking too late. You say you're breaking at the fifty, at going the 50 into thirteen. Yeah, at the fifty board. So here's the break zone right here. Boom, or just after fifty, I'm breaking. Your your screen so it's broken up. Where's the line at? There's a line that's across. Oh, it's that's it right there in front of me. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's I think I'm breaking there. later. Th and wait, I'm breaking too late compared to you. Yeah, so if you're braking later, what's going to ultimately happen with that is you are going to be standing the car in its nose to get the car slowed down so the car is not balanced on your entry. Try braking a little earlier, a little softer, a little longer, and you'll be able to get out of the brake sooner. The platform will be more stable and you'll be able to accelerate coming out of the corner as opposed to fighting it all the way down um, and waiting for the car to get balanced before you get on the throttle. So, Yeah, that makes sense. Thank you. No problem. Chris? Yes. Where's your brake bias? Uh, on this one, I think I took it two clicks back from from high downforce. So I think the dash said 0.63 or something like that. Um, so not much to the rear from, from stock. Thank you. Yep, yep. All right. So let's look and see what it looks like without me starting and stopping it all the time from the cockpit. So here we go, cockpit. Coming out of the final corner, screaming down the front straight. All the way up into sixth. Looking for the 100 board. That's going to be our brake zone. We're going to downshift all the way to second gear. Boom, boom, boom. Keep it nice and tight. Be patient. Eyes up, eyes up. There's the curving. Start tracking out. Full throttle. Keep the car left. We're going to downshift to third on entry. Keep it nice and tight. Down to second. Nice high line through here. Use the camber. Eyes up. Look for the orange mark. There it was. And send it down the straightaway. The curvy straightaway. We're going to brake at the top of the hill. Nice light brake. We're going to go down to fourth gear. Keep the car balanced. There it is. Fourth gear. And then start feeding on throttle. Full throttle right at the compression point. We're going to brake. Go down to third gear. Back on throttle right at the compression. Opening our hands. Brake. And we can start to see that curve on the right, down to second gear, get down to it. Open our hands as we're accelerating out. Go to mid-track, brake. We're gonna be very patient. Decreasing radius, accelerate, look for the DRS board. There it is, and accelerate out. We're gonna brake just before the rumble strip going into the chicane, down to second gear. Get to that apex point where the sausage is and just track straight out and keep it nice and tight. Patience, start accelerating on the latter half of the corner. Control the oversteer. Brake at the 50 board or just after. Down to third gear. Back on the throttle as soon as we get the camera to help us. And then we ride it all the way around. 
turn 14, back on the straightaway, mid-track, to get a good run. And that's Zandvoort. It comes fast, it comes quick. Um, again, as we, as I were talking before, it is, it is, uh, there's a lot of camber. I mean, that's where Zandvoort really kind of shows its teeth is the different camber situations that you're facing. Um, almost all the corners here are on camber. They are helping you take the corner. So you can take it faster than you would if you didn't have camber. But where it starts to differ is there's different degrees of camber that are helping you. So some corners will give you lots of help and some corners while giving you some help won't give you nearly as much. So they feel relatively flat. Um, you've got to learn where the car, what the car feels like on high camber situations and low camber situations and use that to your advantage when you go through um, to know how much and, and to get on the throttle and when you can get on the throttle. The earlier you can get on the throttle around here, the better. And that's pretty much a mantra anywhere you go. The sooner you can get on throttle coming out of a corner, the more speed you're going to be able to get on the way out. Slow in, fast out. So that's what we're trying to do. Um, any questions about Zandvoort first, and then, yeah. and then we can talk about other things. Okay. Chris, questions on turn one and turn three. Yes. Turn one, um, you could have been quite a bit more inside. Is that not a good idea? You, you had uh, almost a full car with you could have displaced taking some curb there. Now, you're going to give up some banking, but noticed you didn't do it. Yeah, so what I'm trying to do through current turn one is I'm trying to, while it is a little bit of a carousel, I am trying to diamond it a touch. So I'm trying to decrease the um, my radius. So I'm trying to bring the nose of the car down on the first part of the corner so I can accelerate and kind of d create a straighter line. So I'm creating a wider arc on the way in and it's just a little bit. So this part right here is me. I'm still decreasing the front radius of the car down to the actual apex point, which is right here, right about the end of the uh, the pit lane wall. So you can see right here, I start picking up throttle, and now yep. the gap has decreased. So I'm trying to create that accelerating out of the corner instead of just following the curb all the way around. But that curb is pretty smooth. You haven't found it any faster to actually take some curb. No, because the, 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 the more you get down here, the less, if you notice, like there's more camber up at the top, and it kind of yeah. starts to lessen and lessen and lessen. And if you get all the way down to the curbing, you'll notice it's pretty flat. So you're going to start losing, you're going to start losing camber that's helping you. Um, yeah. And then also because of, while there's not a big bump, there is still some of it that has a tendency to kind of unbalance the car and kind of bounce you out to the left anyway. So I like to keep it nice and clean, use that camber to my advantage to kind of come off the bowl and accelerate out as opposed to okay. getting and keeping it nice and short. Okay, turn three, the weirdest corner on the whole track. Uh, and I haven't had time to experiment. Uh, I'm sure going way down, like you said, is super slow, but uh, there's a lot of room above you too. And especially opportunistically, if you got a driver ahead of you that overcooks it or has a hard time, could you take even a quite a bit wider line, maybe even up on the green to get around somebody that's having trouble? You can get out there, but there's not going to be a lot of people running up there. Um, and you can actually start to already see it. Um, yeah, mar marbles, marbles are starting to form out there. Um, the, the dark part of the track is dark for a reason. That's where everybody's driving. Um, and so you're they're basically turn three is uh, an exercise in how much camber do I want to get at the expense of distance, right? At some point going and getting more camber is going to be less beneficial than the distance that you're traveling, right? Mm -hmm. So you're going to be traveling too far to make, take the advantage of the camber. So, right here in the middle pretty much or just just right of middle allows you to use a lot of that camber but also doesn't let you you're not traveling an extra hundred feet than you normally would and that's why the rubber is here i mean the the old adage both in real life and in sim too because they do a really good job of modeling and textures at this point but whenever you're going to a racetrack in real life look where the rubber is that's where people are hitting the same spots every single time and they're doing that for a reason. Um, so when I go to Coda, for instance, Coda's got all these yellow sausage curbings. And you look at them, the front of the sausage curbings all are yellow still. The back of the sausage curbings are black. And it's because that's where all the pros that race at Coda are hitting the curb is with their tire. And they're making it, they're marking it and creating those black marks. It's because that's where they've discovered is the fastest line. 
Um, but I invite you to try different things too. Like that's one of the nice things about the sim is go run some laps on the high line, go run some laps down there at the curbing, go run some laps in the middle and go into a data program and see the speed difference differentials and see the lap time differentials through that, that corner. And that'll tell you real quick, which one do you, which one is the, the optimal one, um, for the way you drive. Um, I'm not saying that there aren't people that can go down here all the way to the curb and make it work. Um, it's just, you're, you're causing, you're using a lot of tire and you're going to be scrubbing a lot of speed down here, um, to try to make it work. This is where the, the track is really helping you. Thanks. Chris, can you talk to, um, overtake zones and specifically start with, uh, the front straight into turn one, setting up wide, uh, somebody got a draft coming in, uh, the defensive line, um, coming into that turn from what n would normally be uh, from the left? Yeah, turn one is Primo 1A passing zone. This is the best place to pass right here. Um, and so you get a good run coming out of 13 all the way down the straightaway. You've drafted on your opponent. It's very easy to get alongside them um, and break right with them and take away the inside, right? So turn one is Primo place to pass. Now, if you don't want to be passed there, um, I would suggest back here as you come out instead of tracking over to the left you know somebody behind you may want to take a look and you're you're trying to defend claim your line right here <laughs> back here at pit entry don't drive down the left side and then move over to try to defend you because again we're not reacting to the car behind us that's not allowed we if we're going to take a defensive line we want to be very we want to, we want to be prevalent we want to we want to announce it to say, hey, I am going to defend here. If you're going to try to pass me, you're going to have to overcome my defense. And so all the way back here, I would pick a line. And if I'm going to take a shallow line, I'm driving basically right between the, the grid. And by driving in the middle of the track, taking your half out of the middle, um, you cause the other car to do one of two things. They have to make a decision. They either have to drive along the wall to try to get the inside here, which means they're going to be hilariously slow going through turn one. Or they're going to take the traditional line, which means they're going to try to have to go around the outside, which is very difficult to do. Um, and that's that's what you're hoping they do so you have a nice defense. If they do take it down the inside and stick it on the wall to try to pass you, what I do is at that point, I will, right before the braking zone, they're along the wall. I will keep them hugged along the wall. I will not move my car until pretty much at the brake zone where I will pretty much break in a straight line on the way out open up the corner so they're going to take it really shallow and really slow and i'm going to take a traditional line which allows me to get momentum coming out of the corner and probably pass them before turn two so that's that's this is the best place to break and, and get a good pass on somebody um, but there's also you can defend as well um turn two three eh, i'd say turn two turn two is not a passing zone it may be tempting um, but it always ends in tears. If somebody tries to make this too wide and sends it up the inside here, it's not good. Um, the inside car is going to run wide just because of physics. And the outside car, if they try to hold it with them, is just going to get clobbered by them in the door. So this is pretty much a single lane thoroughfare through here. Now what you can do on the way out is if, if you're following another car and you notice that they keep taking this high line, so they pinch off this corner and take this high line, you could take the alternate line, which is, as we were talking, this this really shallow line. I think Max did it one a couple years ago um, on somebody, or Fernando did at the start of a race. Um, you can send it down the inside here. Um, just make sure you send it and don't just like miss the corner and then run up the track and run into somebody. Um, but yeah, if somebody takes a, a wide entry and keeps it off the the uh, the apex down here. You can send it down the inside, but just understand you're going to be slower than the car that's taking the traditional line. So you will pass them on the way in, but then you got to figure out how you're going to keep that on the way out because that's where the car that you're passing is going to have the advantage. Um, so try it. Try different lines through here. It's really important, but you can make a move in the three. It's just not the most advisable because it tend, it's just so much. There's not a lot of room, and if you make a mistake, you tend to come in contact. The straightaway here is tempting to get alongside someone. Um, if you can, just understand that you have to leave your opponent room and they have to leave you room. Um, notice how, as I'm taking this by my own, I'm using every inch of the track, right? It's not like I am, um, I'm not using every inch of the track. 
Um, it's very similar to Watkins Glen on the way up the hill out of turn one, um, going through the S's on the way up. Very similar type of situation. There's very few times where you go too wide at Watkins Glen up the hill. This is a very same thing. So I try to advise against it. Um, if you are able to get alongside someone here, great. You want to be the inside car. You don't want to be the outside car. But again, it's so hard to get to that point because of the S's prior to it. So very high risk move to try to pass someone coming into turn seven. I wouldn't advise it. Um, again, because it's a single line, there's not a lot of room for somebody to get alongside to go into turn eight. So this is not really a passing zone. And then we get to the this little stadium section I call. So this is a great place to try to attack somebody because there's so many lines and you can make them work. So you can send it down the inside here and park it on the apex and slow up the car or your opponent. Um, you can follow them through and try to see what they're going to do on the, on the left-hander up here and decide that's where I'm going to make my move. Lots of passing opportunities. This is an action spot of the track. This is designed for, pa for people to pass, um, and that's why it looks the way it does. So try different lines through here. In your opinion, when you're in the race environment and cars in front and back, uh, somebody's trying, they've been testing you for a while, when you come into nine, where are you going to be at? If I've got somebody, if somebody has been testing me all the way into nine right here, um, it depends on it, a lot of factors. Um, if it's early in the race and they've got pace on me, I may let them go because I don't want that pressure on me for the next 30 minutes. I'll let them go and I'll ride behind them and wait till my opportune point and put the pressure on them for them to make a mistake. And then I'll repass if it's late in the race and you know, we got five minutes left or three laps or so, and I'm towards the front and I'm starting to get pressure from the guy behind, then I'm driving defensive the whole way. So I'm driving mid track here, um, through here. I'm driving mid track on the, on the exit or I'm, I'm tracking out just like this on the way out. So they can't get the inside of me here. I'm driving towards the left side here to protect on the inside because the only way you can get past in this section is by somebody taking away your inside. It's almost impossible well, to go around the outside. Well, I was kind of curious if you did anything on eight different, because if you change coming into eight, you can change your speed coming into nine, which can cut off some things. Cause I've tried to go inside and then people go around me on nine or, or try to go on the outside of nine, which normally does not work, but I just didn't know if you did anything on eight different. You, all these corners, what's really nice about them is you can delay the point where you accelerate and pinch them off, take them tighter on the exit, and you're not going to lose a lot of time because at the end of the day, the tighter you keep it, the less distance you're traveling. Yeah, you're not going as fast, but you're not traveling as far a distance. So coming through eight, if you take it, if you just delay your throttle input, so I'm waiting, waiting, waiting. Normally I go to throttle here to maintain my momentum through the corner. If I just wait a second and get a narrower line, I can take it shallower on the exit. And what does that do? Okay, I'm going maybe two, three miles an hour slower than I would be if I took the ideal line. But guess what? I'm not traveling this extra distance all the way around the corner. I'm keeping it tighter which means I'm going a shorter distance. So I'm not going as fast, but I'm not going as far either. So you can get to the point where it's almost a wash. Now you'll be taking the next corner shallow, which means you're gonna to have to slow down even more, but you're protecting yourself from attack. So that's what makes this, again, that's what makes this section so fun is there's so many different lines you can take. So you gotta practice different lines to see what's most efficient. And what the line that I'm showing you here is the line that I was finding worked for me at 64 degrees with relatively fresh tires on a full tank of gas, right? This may not be the same line that you take if it's a hundred degree track temp late in the race, your tires are half worn um, and you're on low fuel. Maybe a different line that's the quickest one. Um, so you gotta experiment with different variables. I wouldn't describe this section as fun, but anyway, uh, I, this is, seems to be the biggest area that people try to pass that I've noticed. I mean, you, turn one, of course, is kind of set up for it, but turn nine, 
is where you really have to be watching for the dive bomb that you don't want to come. Yeah, you do. Um, but also know if somebody does dive bomb you, right? If you're driving a good line and good pace and doing what the car is allowing you to do and not going over its limits, if somebody's going to dive bomb you to try to get by you, they're going to be all sorts of messed up on track out, right? And that's where we leave. That's where the over under comes in. You come into the corner, they dive you. They're too fast, which means they're going to have to stop the car at or after apex. You have the traditional line. You just come right in under them and you repass them on the exit. So that's the over under. And that's if you're driving the car well and at its limit, the other, the person dive bombing you is not going to all of a sudden have more grip than your car is. It's a spec race. So you use that to your advantage, back the corner up, get a better run and you just repass them on the exit. Um, and now they're probably even further behind because they got a really bad exit. So, well, that's what I was curious about. I was wondering if you were going to say take nine, you know, if they're, if you know they're dive bombing you or whatever, take nine outside so that you know you got 10 inside because you're never going to pass somebody on the outside of 10. That's just never going to work. Yeah. But if I would never give away the apex of nine to go too wide, like I wouldn't take this wider knowing that somebody may come in on the inside. If, unless they're alongside me, if they're alongside me, that's a different story altogether. Or we're, we're, we're fighting and I got to leave them room. They got to yeah, leave me room. Course, yeah. And you're going to be in the right spot for 10. Right. But if they're behind me at this point, I'm not displacing this. I'm still taking it traditionally. I'm just tracking all the way out to the exit, just like I did on, on this lap. You know, I'm putting myself here. Nobody's going to get to the left side of me over here, which means I'm in the good spot for 10. But no, great questions. I mean, this is this is racecraft. This is why we race. This isn't hot lapping. This is this is awesome stuff, and this is why we race. Um, is because you don't know what the opponent's going to do, um, and you know a good opponent will fake a move. They may show their nose and deny, so you think, oh no, they're going to try to dive me, and then you go to protect, which sacrifices your line, and then they threw you a dummy, and they get on the traditional line, and they're faster as a result. It's racecraft. It's one of the, one of the great things about this sport. Um, going back to the the passing zones, uh, I do not like passing going into the chicane. There's just no room. Um, it's much like turn eight that we were talking about. That like kink. Um, there's only one car here. You can't take this corner too wide. Uh, if you send it down the inside here, uh, and the outside car doesn't yield, you're gonna, you guys are gonna connect on the exit. It just always happens. Um, I would just unless you can get past your opponent under braking i wouldn't try it um just get in line and try to find a better spot like coming out of 13 down the front straight get a good run and get a good pass into turn one uh to make it work um you can go too wide through here it's just very rare um but it can happen especially if the car in front gets a really bad run you can hold it around the outside it's just it's tough um turn 13 I would not pass into here. It's going to make both cars slow relative to the field all the way down the straightaway. I would just get in line, get a good run on them, go through turn 13 as best as you can, get a draft on them, and then you can probably clear them before turn one. So turn 13, it may be tempting to send it down the inside, but you're both going to be slow um, and you're going to lose a second or two to the field by if you do that. So. So to recap, turn one, turn three, the stadium section that we talked about, those are probably your best places to pass. Any other questions? Yeah, the big one. The big one. Tires or no tires at the pit stop? Ha. Huh. Um I don't know. I haven't done a run yet to see how much tires are wearing here and how much fuel is being burned. Um at most you may be able to get away with two tires and if that's the case i'm guessing i'm guessing it's going to be left side tires are going to be the most beneficial because that is what is getting chewed up around here um but yeah see i it, if you do a 30 minute run uh just open up your tire after you've done the 30 minute run open up your tire profile and see what your percentages are at um, but you may be in a situation where like if you run 30 minutes and you look at your tires and they're all in the 80% or your, your left sides are at 80% and your right sides are at 90. 
I wouldn't change tires. You still got plenty of grip on, on the tires that are even wearing. So just remember that when you switch tires, two things happen. You're changing the balance of the car because the one the tires you don't change have different grip than the tires you do change. And the tires that you do put on the car are going to be cold, which means they're not going to have grip for the first half of the lap uh, relative to the other side. And then they're going to have more grip relative to the other side. So if you change front tires, you're going to improve your braking. Um, if you change rear tires, you're going to improve the amount of grip you have in the rear, which means you're going to tend to understeer more. Uh, if you change left to right, so you're going to change the dynamics of the car. So if you change left side tires, after the tires warm up, you'll be able to turn right better than you would to turn left, which can work well because then it's just certain corners and they just all feel different. Um, but where you're going to start to maybe feel a little bit of a difference is under braking where you've got different grip levels on different sides of the car. So your car may be a little bit more twitchy under braking. Um, but then once it warms up, it should be okay. Um, I This entire series so far, I haven't changed tires. So take that for for what it is. You should be able to get away without taking tires in a 45 minute race. These cars are designed to go at least an hour on a set of tires. So if you're finding that you really like you're, you're burning your tires up uh, in 30 minutes, you're overdriving the car um, and try to bring everything back and be quieter with your inputs. And you'll probably go faster as a result because um, you're overdriving. So keep that in mind as well. Um, asking for a friend, what is the one X on the X or entry to 14 exit out of 13, wh whatever. I mean, cause you can hit the gravel there, but I don't know what exactly causes the one X on the exit. On the ex it, well, entrance exit, whatever out of 13 here into 14, where's the one X? Uh, your one X is probably going to be, I don't know where, it, I don't know exactly where it is. Cause I don't. I don't think I've ever hit it. Um, but, I mean, this is not a 1X. I'm guessing if you get your Yeah, not bad on the other, on the exit of 13, I guess. Oh, up here? Um, don't touch the gravel. Um, you may not get a 1X. Your, your 1X is probably your left side tires, like, fully in the gravel. May give you the 1X. But if you touch the gravel with the way iRacing changed it to be more realistic, you're losing speed. So even if you nibble the gravel you're losing speed. Like I wouldn't go any further left than I am here because even if you don't get a one X and you go out here and you get in the gravel, it's going to slow you down. You're going to lose some mile an hour or two because of the way the gravel works. So don't, don't get in the gravel. So in other words, the one X is not the point. <laughs> it's the speed. So yeah. um, it, uh, if, if, if you hit your rules page right up. Uh, yeah. Uh, does that know? Okay. It doesn't have it in this one. The, they'll usually show in green or red where the one X factors are yeah. on the track, but it's I, not showing it. Yeah. Yeah. Not me, but a friend of mine always hits the gravel. There, <laughs> so I don't know. If, if the car in front of you is always hitting the gravel here, you should be smiling because if you don't hit the gravel, you'll be able to pass them into turn one <laughs> because they're going to be slower as a result every time. It's a friend of mine. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> don't hit the gravel. If anything, don't like right left side tires. Keep it right here on the seam. Um, don't even get close to it, frankly, because that's going to be more harmful than anything. Cool. Any other questions? These are these are great. I appreciate the the, the questions and the and the comments because it makes things interesting. <laughs> Nobody wants to hear me drone for an hour. All right. Um, well, if that's it, um, then I will let you guys go. Um, go out and practice. Give it a good shot. I will put this recording up uh, on YouTube like I always do. So if you ever want to revisit it, you're more than welcome to. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me directly here on Discord, um, and I'll try to answer them or ask any of the uh, the instructors here on Discord, uh, and they should be able to point you in the right direction. Um, I think there's an EDE. I, I'm not totally sure when the EDEs are, but there may be uh, one. After West, this. Coast West Coast EDE is tonight, uh, 7 p.m. West Coast time. Okay, so there is a there is a uh, EDE tonight, but it's for the West Coast folks. Um, doesn't mean that, I mean, you don't have to be on the West Coast. It's just going to be later. So that's just the time. Um, oh, one more quick comment. Um, 
make sure you practice your I mean you, know, you always practice your pit exit when you go onto track so that's not as big a deal just remember to keep it tight don't go over the the white line here um, so it's all the way around turn one um, but also practice your pit ins a um, little bit of a tricky pit entrance in the sense that there's almost like a little chicane through there and you can go way deeper than you probably think that you can before you need to break um, so remember always attack the cones um, because that's time that you can leave on the table uh, don't speed obviously uh, make sure you err on the side of caution for not speeding but make sure when you get on the brakes you're braking all the way down to the codes hit the pit speed limiter and then you're good to go so better you can do that you can pass people in pit lane when that happens so make sure you practice it all right well with that i will wish you guys a good evening um, i'm going to go ahead and stop the uh the the recording here um and uh, i'll stay on for a little bit thanks, longer Chris. if you have any questions yeah no problem thanks guys